One day, Elder Tetsu asked, When I am sitting in Zazen and my thoughts are not scattered, my energy sinks and I become sleepy. What can I do about this? The master said, Urge yourself to get up and do dancing Zazen. From the book Warrior of Zen by Suzuki Shoshan. A form, kata in Japanese, is a prearranged and precisely choreographed set of movements. A form can range in complexity from a few movements to over a hundred. There are three purposes behind the practice of forms. As a monomic device, to develop the muscular skeletal system, and to improve psychomotor skills. Monomic a monomic device is a method used to help remember information. The information to be remembered is linked with other information such as an image or rhyme. For example, the rhyme, in 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue, is used to remember the date of the discovery of North America. The rhyme is stored in one area of the brain, while the words themselves and their meaning are stored in another. Because the information is spread out, it leaves a stronger impression. The greater number of associations a piece of information is able to make, the easier the recall. Learning a martial arts form is like learning to play a musical instrument. Each movement is a note, each drill is a scale, and each form is a song. Once you know the notes and the scales, songs become easier to learn and remember. Therefore, one function of a form is as a method used to organize individual movements into a structure that is easier to remember. A form thus becomes a packet of information that contains within it all the complex physical movements of self-defense, training techniques, strategies, and history. Development of the Muscular Skeletal System Forms are also used as a method of exercise that works on different areas of the body simultaneously. Practicing forms quickly will develop the cardiovascular system increase flexibility and anaerobic capacity and stimulate the body's metabolic system. When performed slowly, a form helps to develop proprioception, balance, sensitivity, the stabilizer muscle groups and increased aerobic capacity. Performing a form provides benefits that practicing individual techniques cannot psychomotor skills. Psychomotor skills are those that involve the movement of the body in space, generally referred to as hand-eye coordination. Forms teach a complex set of positions and movements that require more attention than we normally have. For example, when you first learn a form, you must practice very slowly, stopping after each posture to look and check on the position of your hands, arms, feet, legs, shoulders, hips, head, and back. As you progress, you develop your sense of proprioception, which enables you to sense your posture rather than checking it visually. This frees the use of your eyes and attention, which can then be used to focus on other aspects, such as breathing, visualization, or an opponent. The nervous system is trained to monitor and perform a far broader range of bodily expressions without the need for conscious direction. At a certain stage, the body is able to act and react on its own without the need of your attention and, in effect, your ego. This is the stage often referred to in the oriental classics of martial arts as the no-mind. 
The body does everything automatically. Your mind, ego, only goes along for the ride. No need to plan and think. You only watch. A similar reflex occurs when you instinctively catch a glass that's falling off the table or when you jump at the sound of a loud noise. Practicing forms trains your reflexes to respond to a much more complex and varied set of circumstances such as reacting to a combination technique or multiple attackers. Finally, forms require movements to be done both right and left-handed. This aids in the synchronization of both the left and right hemispheres of the brain. The activation of both hemispheres improves not only physical performance but mental acuity as well. To maintain optimum physical condition, it is desirable to train using both homolateral, one side of the body is used, and cross-lateral exercise, both sides of the body. A fully integrated person will be able to switch from one set to another without difficulty. Zen training may succeed because it gives control of the body directly to the part of the brain that smoothly coordinates muscle movement, the cerebellum. Operating below the level of consciousness, the cerebellum appears to contain programs for moving many parts of the body in coordination. From the book, The Future of the Body, by Michael Murphy. Keys to Understanding Forms in the martial arts, a large amount of time is spent on forms practice. Forms are the heart and soul of a style, containing not only fighting techniques, but also the strategic and philosophical principles of that style. Chinese forms differ from Japanese and Korean forms in that the latter used the principle of keeping only what was directly useful in combat and have discarded those movements that were not. Watching Japanese and Korean forms being performed, one can easily recognize the techniques being used. In contrast, when watching Chinese forms, many movements appear strange and theatrical and the combat applications are not always clear. As a result, Chinese forms are occasionally criticized as being flowery and impractical. There are several cultural influences affecting the way Chinese forms developed. One factor is the notoriously secretive attitude surrounding the Chinese styles. The old masters were said to have hidden their best techniques by changing to make them incomprehensible to anyone that did not possess the key to understanding the style. Older generation masters would teach the true applications to only a select group of students, often referred to as closed door sessions. While in the regular open class, all students would learn the same movements. Only the most trusted students would be taught the true applications behind the technique. In this way, the style's most important techniques were kept secret. In addition to the hidden techniques, forms also include movements that have no combat applications. These include breathing exercises, stretching or conditioning exercises, religious, symbolic and dramatic gestures, dirty tricks, and finesse techniques. Because they contain many hidden meanings, classical forms are like a puzzle that can only be solved by persistent study. Even after years of practicing a form, a sudden flash of insight will reveal new applications and principles. The following keys may help to unlock the secrets of the classical martial arts forms. Blending Techniques The most common method of hiding techniques is by blending the techniques together. 
In Japanese katas, there is usually a stop, a pause, after each technique to show precision and focus. In Chinese forms, such as Tai Chi, the techniques are often blended together without a pause between the end of one technique and the start of the next. It is this blending of techniques that give Chinese forms their characteristic fluidity and their mystery, since without proper understanding you would not recognize many of the techniques being performed. Grappling Techniques Forms may also include grappling techniques. Such techniques as throws, joint locks, wrist and throw grabs, when performed without an opponent, can appear random or irrelevant. Imagine grabbing an opponent by the lapel and the sleeve and tripping him over your leg. When done with a partner, the application is obvious. But when practiced solo, the hands grabbing the air, the leg moving forwards, then backwards, would appear a meaningless pantomime to someone who didn't already know how to execute a sweep. Speed Techniques These can also be hidden in a form by performing the movement slower than it would be applied in actual combat. For example, a whipping finger strike to the eyes, known as a fan hand, performed slowly, appears graceful and feminine but only when performed at full speed does the application become apparent. Tai Chi is an example of an entire style performed in slow motion, often making the applications hard to discern. Breathing Techniques Breathing exercises are an essential facet of forms. The speed and pacing of a form is dependent on the breathing rhythm of the person performing. Fast and hard techniques will be followed by slow and relaxed. Advancing techniques are followed by retreating, so that the oscillation of the breathing is echoed in the movement of the body. Also incorporated into forms are specific Qigong exercises a combination of deep abdominal breathing, dynamic hand movements, and visualization. In the so-called hard styles, the hand movements are performed slowly using dynamic tension. In soft styles, the hand movements are done relaxed with the focus on visualizing qi flowing throughout the body. Another facet of qigong movements are vocalizations. In addition to the Japanese kiai, spirit yell, Chinese forms also include a variety of vocalizations. When punching or kicking, short, sharp exhalations, similar to yelling hut, are used to focus the chi and to momentarily tense the body at the moment of impact. Tensing the body for just an instant increases the body's mass behind the technique. Other sounds used when striking include a crane call produced by a sudden contraction of the diaphragm, similar to a technique taught in modern voice classes. A more unusual vocal technique performed during the Qigong set is a long descending wail that starts in the falsetto range and then descends through the octave to the bass range. This wail is designed to show breath control and is identical to a voice exercise practiced in Chinese opera schools. Conditioning There are several ways in which physical conditioning exercises are incorporated into a form. First, Forms practice increases endurance and provides cardiovascular benefits. Second, during forms, stances are performed much lower than they would be in real life. Maintaining low stances throughout the form is excellent for developing leg strength. Third, movements are exaggerated, requiring greater effort and flexibility. 
For example, in the long fist style, the arms are held stretched out away from the body and the techniques are large and exaggerated. This works the deltoid and trapezius muscles in the shoulders as well as the waist. For more strenuous conditioning, weights in the form of heavy brass or iron rings were worn around the forearms. Kicks are also done higher in a form than would be done in application. When practicing forms, many kicks are usually aimed at head height, although in self-defense, most teachers admonish against kicking higher than the solar plexus. The high kicks in a form help to increase flexibility and balance. Symbolic Gestures Forms occasionally include movements that are symbolic of the style. Every form begins with a bow or a salute. Unlike the simple military salute, martial arts salutes can be quite complex, with equally complex meanings. Some represent the origins of the form or religious influences. Others are secret handshakes left over from the time when martial arts were taught in secret societies. The stepping pattern of a form may also be symbolic. Two examples of this are the Bagua, the eight trigram style, and the Meihua Zhuang, the wooden plum flower form. While practicing the eight trigram form, the player steps along the edges of an imaginary circle. The style's history maintains that the form evolved from an ancient training device that consisted of various sandbags hung on ropes and arranged in a 3x3 three three grid. The form was meant to be practiced inside the structure, with the sandbags representing multiple attackers. As the player struck the sandbags, they would begin to swing. The faster and harder the sandbags are struck, the more wildly they swing, increasing the difficulty of the exercise. Dramatic Chinese opera and kung fu have had a long relationship with both art forms borrowing from each other. Special boarding schools called Jiu Xiao train its students to become actors in Chinese opera and are run like military boot camps with much of the curriculum devoted to Kung Fu and gymnastics. Kung Fu techniques are an integral part of the opera's numerous battle scenes where the performers must wield and spin weapons and battle several opponents in choreographed fight scenes similar to those found in modern movies. While Chinese opera incorporated Kung Fu techniques Kung Fu also borrowed many dramatic techniques from the opera. One of the most famous characters in Chinese opera is Guan Gong, who is characterized by his use of a particularly heavy and cruel-looking halberd called the Guan Dao. Guan Gong began his career during the Three Kingdoms period, 220-280 AD as a general for the state of Shu and became famous for his proficiency with the halberd, which was used then as a cavalry weapon. Guan is one of the main characters in the classic Chinese novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which ensured his place in Chinese history. Later, Guan was posthumously canonized as saint of the military and martial arts, and as such he plays a symbolic role in Kung Fu clubs. A statue or picture of General Guan is usually found on the club's temple, and a Guan Dao is sometimes displayed in front of the club's entrance to act as a signboard. When using the Guan Dao in a form, there are several dramatic gestures that have no practical applications, but have obviously been adopted from the theater. General Guan is always portrayed as having a long black beard. In the weapons form, as in the opera, the performer strokes an imaginary beard. 
in addition to those forms that have borrowed from Peking opera, there are those forms that are based on legend and folklore and act out aspects of the story in a form of pantomime. Other examples of dramatic gestures are found in the animal styles. Each style will incorporate movements that embody the characteristics of the animal, such as the graceful, open arm hops and turns of the white crane, the facial grimaces and ape-like gestures of the monkey, the hypnotic bobbing and weaving of the snake and praying mantis. Some of these techniques have a combat application, while others are for aesthetic reasons only. By far the most theatrical and physically demanding is the drunken form found in several styles. Based on a story of a martial arts master who, returning home drunk from a celebration, is surprised by some street thugs intent on robbery. Though hardly able to stand, the drunken master nevertheless defeats his attackers. Later, upon sober reflection, the master perceives a strategic advantage. By feigning drunkenness, one's enemy is lured into overconfidence and will lower his guard, making him vulnerable to a sudden and swift attack. The master then incorporated these principles into a form that only the most advanced students were able to learn. In the form, the practitioner seems to stumble and fall in a drunken stupor while holding an imaginary bottle and shot glass in his hands. The dramatic elements of a form are a continuation of an ancient tradition of acting out stories of great deeds and battles of past heroes to inspire and teach the younger generation of warriors. And before wars, to an even more ancient tradition of acting out the tactics of the great hunt while gathered around the communal cooking fires. Finesse Finesse techniques are usually found in weapons forms and are meant to demonstrate the performer's expertise in handling the weapon. A similar idea is expressed in a gunfighter spinning his revolver on one finger before holstering or a rock drummer's throwing and twirling his drumsticks while playing. These techniques are almost all show, but do require considerable practice. They include spinning weapons such as the sword and staff about the body, passing the weapon from one hand to another behind the back, overhead and around the neck. The finesse techniques, like the dramatic, are incorporated more for beauty than combat although some are effective in combat application. Miscellaneous Some forms may include distractions. These include clapping your hands above your head to distract your opponent's attention upward while simultaneously kicking low or stomping the foot to attract attention down while throwing a sucker punch. A white crane tactic is to dangle the lead hand in the opponent's face, taunting him. Almost everyone makes a swing or a grab at the hand. Knowing this, you wait until the opponent begins to move, then retract the offending hand and counterpunch with the other hand, catching the opponent completely by surprise while still reaching in the air. If the opponent doesn't take a swing at the hand, you can further infuriate him by pecking him on the nose a couple of times. This tactic is still performed in the white crane form, though many watching believe it to be a pantomime of the crane's movement. We tend to stop learning when we have mastered sufficient skills to attain our immediate objective. Thus, for example, we improve our speech until we can make ourselves understood. But any person who wishes to speak with the clarity of an actor discovers that he must study speech for several years in order to achieve anything approaching his maximum potential. An intricate process of a limiting ability accustoms us to make do with a small part of our potential. 
from Moshe Feldenkrais. How to learn forms. There are generally two approaches to learning forms. The first is to learn and master each technique one at a time, starting at the beginning. The second is to learn the entire form as a whole and then to work on improving the techniques each time the form is played. Each approach has a benefit and a drawback. In the first method, students benefit by learning to execute each technique expertly, the drawback being that it could take years to learn a single form and students must overcome the boredom of months of repetition. In the second approach, students quickly learn the various movements of the form and training remains interesting. The drawback is that after learning the forms, most students fail to improve on the execution of the individual techniques and consequently their form appears sloppy and weak. In this case, students are unaware of the difference between learning and mastering. That to learn a form can take a few months, but to master a form may take years. There is a compromise between the two methods. The form is broken down and learned one section at a time. Then each section is broken down into one, two or three move drills. And these drills are practiced separately from the form. When all the techniques within the first section can be effectively executed, then the next section is taken and so on. Exercises for training in form. Forms can provide specific benefits by changing the way in which the form is practiced. If practice becomes repetitious and robotic, the benefits are greatly reduced. To keep forms alive and interesting, change the way they are performed or add other outside elements. The following are different ways of practicing forms. Five elements style. Practice outdoors, under varying climatic conditions, in wild places, on mountains, under trees, during rain or snow, hot and cold. Practice late at night in remote wilderness, under a clear sky, during a full moon. Earth style. Lower your stance so that the thighs are nearly parallel to the ground. While performing the movements, maintain the low stance throughout. This is an excellent method to develop the leg muscles and solid stances. Metal style. In earlier times, brass or iron rings were worn around the wrists and ankles to add weight during forms practice. Modern wrist and ankle weights can be substituted for iron rings to help in the development of muscles and endurance. Be careful not to perform the movements too quickly since the weights tend to make you overextend your techniques which can cause injury to the joints. Empty style. Practice the form while blindfolded. Make sure there is plenty of room so that you don't bump into things. Practicing forms blindfolded will improve the senses of proprioception, balance, and magnetic direction. Wood style. Practice the form as slowly as possible, as though a tree gently swaying in the wind. It doesn't matter what style you practice. The method of practicing slowly will provide the same benefits as Tai Chi. Wind style. Used in weapons forms, attach silk or satin fabric ribbons to the end of your weapon. With a staff, tie one four-foot ribbon to each end or tie one ribbon to the end of your sword and practice thrusts, parries, and twirls. The ribbons help to reveal the subtle geometric patterns inherent in the use of the weapon, giving a sense of the aerodynamics of the weapon. Ribbons can also be tied to the wrists, which help to slow down the movement, similar to seeing it in slow motion. This provides real-time feedback on movements normally done too quickly for the eye to follow. 
fire style. Practice at night in varying degrees of candlelight helps to develop relaxation and inner focus.